Thank you for that. Um, wow, what a tough act to follow. Um, so encouraged. Uh, I love how, uh, Leslie, you just uh, tackled, like, um, I guess one of the questions that we always get when we talk about tracking, you know, is privacy. Privacy, privacy. What do we do with all the data? What, what are people going to do with my data? Well, I just wanted to uh, um, talk a little bit about this more on the device side and uh, just share with you um, a couple of stories, a couple of, a couple of thoughts. I'm uh, going to tell you a little bit about uh, our, our company, what we do, the product, um, and then just uh, take you through a journey through the wearables world. Um, how did we get to this place where we're wearing technology now? And uh, what is the world? What is the wearables world right now? What is, you know, just a quick survey there. And then talk a little bit about where we're headed in, in that space. Um, so the, uh, my, my company, its uh, name is called Misfit. We, uh, uh, one of the co-founders, uh, so Shredo and I have done three startups together. John, uh, this is our first uh, startup together. Uh, he's one of the co-founders, former CEO of Apple. And uh, we're based in San Francisco, uh, we make everything in Korea. And our uh, journey has been a relatively short one, but uh, <coughs> certainly uh, 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 quite a roller coaster ride for us. We started uh, two and a, about, a little bit more than two years ago, and we were working on another product. And then along the way, we saw how fitness tracking really took off. So we said, oh, let's, let's give it a shot. We did a crowdfunded product, uh, project on Indiegogo. Uh, I'm not sure if anyone here has. Uh, Heard of Kickstarter or Indiegogo? Uh, done a crowdfunding? Yeah, okay, so this is a pretty connected crowd. We, uh, so we did the, whole, the Shine. It was a very different uh, type of activity monitor. Um, we weren't sure people were going to buy it, so we did this crowdfunding thing. And it worked uh, out amazing, and, uh, just amazingly well. And one thing le led to another, and we ended up in uh, the Apple Store and a number of other places, including the Olympics, where they were giving, giving out the, uh, a red Shine uh, uh, to a bunch of the athletes. So uh, we had a lot of fun making this product. It's a little activity tracker, um, a little metal disc that lights up and tells you how well you're doing. Uh, the approach we took was very different, where we designed it from the outside in, tried to think about how people would wear it um, in a sea of black rubber bands. Uh, we wanted to, we thought, oh, maybe we could, could have some fun by making something out of metal, something very different. And uh, so now we have colors, we have different ways you can wear it. Um, so we wanted to make it something that uh, you could easily wear. Um, and most recently, we did a, this little necklace that we just launched. It's called the Bloom. Um, now, so that, that's a, a, a short word about us. Now, the question I wanted to ponder was, why, what is it that we're after? Why, why are we here now with, in, with wearable technology? It seems in maybe 10 years ago, it seems almost unimaginable that you would wear technology. You would think cyborgs, you'd think Steve Mann, and uh, you know, uh, uh, images like that. But now it seems quite uh, normal to be doing something like that. And I think uh, at the end of the day, much of wh what's driving this movement is the desire to change our lives, change habits. Um, and I think it comes from uh, getting insights. Uh, the debate has been around whether is it about getting more data or having better algorithms to analyze the data. You obviously need both. Um, I think if you speak, uh, talk to some uh, circles, the, uh, the prevailing view there would be that uh, it's about having more data. You know, our view has always been what you actually need is better data. And I think that is in many ways what's lacking. Um, and we're able to get all this now mainly because we have, uh, because of sensors. Now, sensors have been around for decades. Um, even the tiny little sensors that, you, uh, that are in wearable technology right now. But largely because of mobile internet, because of these little devices that we're typing into right now and that we have in our pockets, uh, the data is, it can be moved, shared, and stored uh, very easily. Now, much like drugs, much like some of the things that we were talking about earlier, uh, these devices are no good if they're not worn, right? So um, uh, you can have a perfectly accurate sensor, but the accuracy for that sensor is zero if, uh, if, you're not, if you don't use it. And so the, the drive has been to make sensing ambient, uh, just uh, among other functions uh, that devices can do for us. Two ways to do, to do this. One is to put it into our environments, into the seats of our, that we're sitting in right now, into our cars, our beds, in our homes, in the cameras and whatnot. Um, now, there are limitations there, obviously, because you, know, you can't take these products with you. Uh, and then the other drive is to put things on the body, and those things are called wearables. Um, and so this is part of a, this, this internet of things uh, 
uh, space that you, you may have heard about. The limitation there is around wearability, and this is something I wanted to talk about. Um, you know, and the question is, well, um, is this wearables thing really the next big thing? Is it really going to happen? Is it really the next evolution uh, that, you know, will it really turn the curve uh, in, uh, in this evolution of mankind where things have seemed to have gone terribly wrong in some ways? Is it really something that uh, mass adoption, where we will see mass adoption? And uh, I actually think in some ways it's kind of an open question. And in some ways, it's, uh, I, I think it's very obvious that much of this will take hold. Um, so if you look at the wearables space now, largely in fitness technology, wellness technology, we, I think we see some uh, medical applications, that chart that uh, Leslie was showing earlier. Definitely, you know, we definitely see that uh, to, be, um, to be reflective of the industry that we're in. Um, you, know, you have things that you can clip onto your body. Uh, straps of various sorts, uh, wristbands of, uh, you know, the wrists very getting to be a space where uh, lots of people are trying to claim uh, rights to. Uh, Sleep-related products, we're seeing a lot more of that. Uh, patches of various sorts, um, things that you're sticking on your body that will measure or and or transmit data. Um, things that you stick into your shoes. Um, all, sorts of, all sorts of things, including uh, sensors and technology put uh, into textile, uh, into the very fabrics, literally, of our lives. So such is the wearable space. Um, and if you think of the iPhone as a wearable product, then you have tens and tens of thousands of apps that can do this kind of thing. Now the question is, uh, so how many people are wearing a wearable device right now? Okay, this is a, quite an unusual crowd. So it's about 20 to 30 percent. Uh, usually it's about 5 percent, very few. Um, but, you know, it's wired, so. Um, but, so the question is, why isn't it the case that there aren't hundreds of millions of people wearing these products? Why is it not the case that, the, you know, if I said how many people, are, you know, have a smartphone or a tablet, it'd be, you know, everybody. Um, and the people who didn't raise their hands is because they too shy to raise their hands. The, and I think it's largely because we're still very early in this space. You know, people say, I've heard people say, oh, wearables, a very crowded space. You know, that's like saying in 1997, the internet, it's really crowded. There's a lot of websites, you know? And, uh, and so I think we're so early. These devices hardly do anything uh, for us. They're bulky. You have to recharge them. Uh, they're often made for athletes, which is great for them, but most people are not athletes. And so I think we're going to see a movement towards um, more lifestyle applications, products that people are wearing all the time, not necessarily Certainly not when they're just exercising, because most of the time you're not exercising. And so as we uh, move into this space, I think one of the things that's going to be that's going to take us from you know minute 20 in the football game to minute 30 and 40, you know, later further into this uh, this space, is more compelling use cases. And so I think that's one of the things that we're uh, lacking in the, right now. I mean, measuring your steps and calories, interesting, but I think there, there's going to be more that we're going to see. Uh, but it's hard. And I'll talk about, quickly about the challenges. Um, the, uh, so one of the tests that we used internally, and if uh, any of you are thinking of making products, consider this uh, test. Uh, we call it the turnaround test. If you're halfway to work and you forgot something, what would you turn around for? Right? And, uh, oops. Um, so, uh, your iPhone, what else? Keys, yep. Child, okay. <laughs> Optional, maybe, for some. Right, so uh, there are a number of these products. And uh, if, we can make, if you can make a product that fills that question mark, maybe it's a digital health product, you know, who knows? Then, uh, then you're onto something. And so, uh, and this bar is very high, okay? But, uh, uh, enabling such incredible use cases would, uh, is, is where, we're, where I think uh, one needs to be. Um, is wearables really the next big thing? You know, if we consider the different revolutions in computing, the PC revolution of the 80s, connected computing in the 90s, mobile and social in the 2000s, in this Internet of Things space, home, office, car, body, body being wearables, um, is this really this, the, the decade that we're in? And I, uh, I think it is, um, but uh, I think it's still, like I said, in some ways very early and uh, plenty of technical challenges. One of the cha key challenges, which I'll talk about briefly, uh, which I'll just mention now, is that unlike the other revolutions in computing, um, the, internet, the wearables in particular, um, is, 
is not, it is already enabled by the Moore's Law-like effects of computational density. Um, but that's not the problem. The problem is that when you have things on your body, you can't really plug them in very often. Or if you do, then it's really counter to human habits that we've developed over millennia. Like when was the last time you plugged in your shirt? Or uh, your, when was the last time you charged your watch? Okay, unless you're wearing a smartwatch, it's just uh, un unusual. So um, there, there are new habits that need to be formed, or there are products that need to be made that are so breakthrough that you don't need to charge them. So, and also when we think about wearables, you know, we have to also consider wearables in the larger scheme of the social IQ, the social habits that we have. Like, why do we wear things? Is it to collect data? You know, that's a very 2010 type of thing to do. But for millennia, we wore things to indicate tribal membership, to protect us, to, uh, as ways of uh, self uh, methods of self-expression, fashion. Uh, those, are very, those are considerations that are very uh, separate from what um, traditionally you know, technologists have been uh, thinking about. And so ultimately, the ideal combination, it's going to be great science, great functionality, coupled with uh, usability that, uh, that's accessible to, to everyone out there. The approach that people have taken up till now has been to figure out what we can do, and then make it pretty, and then get marketers to convince you to wear it. Um, and uh, I really think uh, the approach that we'll start to see more of is where people, where we'll be deciding, designing from the outside in, think about what people would wear, and then inventing to make sure that it will work. I mean, we had to come up with a new way of communicating data just because the device is made of metal, and you know, it's a Faraday cage, so you can't actually transmit data very easily out of it. Um, and uh, designing for manufacturing from the beginning, um, and thinking about that in a holistic process. So, I'd, uh, there's another, I'm not sure how much time I have, but uh, the, uh, uh, so where, where I want to conclude is, um, uh, I wish I could just, uh, make some predictions here and say, okay, this is where wearables is headed. You know, we have some trends that I think are going to happen. But I think what's going to be, uh, what's exciting about this space, especially for the digital health space, and I, is that if you consider some of the things uh, that are breakthrough, that, uh, that we consider commonplace now, you know, email, making phone calls, uh, sending, make, sending email on the go, uh, taking photographs digitally, uh, uh, social networks, GPS, you know, if you consider these arcs of possibilities through history, uh, just in recent history, if we say uh, we're in the 50s and someone said, you're going to be able to send e uh, messages, um, you know, many, many pages of text without using a telegraph, and it'll be basically free. It's, it's almost unimaginable. You couldn't even imagine that use case. But now it's so commonplace that uh, it's almost ridiculous that we even think of email as a, as a breakthrough. And um, I actually think same thing with, uh, with wearables. I actually think uh, activity tracking, it's such a, uh, such a first version one type of uh, feature. And I actually think some of the groundbreaking uh, use cases that will be coming will, uh, we don't actually know what they are yet. Um, and, if we, and when we're talking at Wired in 2021, we'll be saying, remember in 2014, we didn't even have X, uh, but X, you know, and we couldn't even imagine what X was. You know, is it really alerts and notification? Is it really telling you how many steps you took? I mean, come on, the, the, the future has to be much more compelling than that, right? I don't think that, I mean, there's, we're not gonna get billions of people to wear wearable devices because they need alerts, notifications, or their steps uh, to be measured, right? And so, um, but if you had a device that could predict a heart attack six hours in advance, okay, maybe. If you had a device that uh, could um, alert you on when uh, you know a uh, you know a, a virus is spreading near you or something. Uh, you know, there's there's I, I can't even imagine. I, I don't even want to try on on the spot like this. Uh, but what's exciting is that I, I believe there will probably be use cases that will come about that uh, we don't even uh, that uh, will come about that may not actually be possible outside of a wearable context. Um, uh, and we'll see. Beyond activity tracking and, and health monitoring, I think we see um, um, wearable identity, wearable payments, uh, wearable uh, controls, devices that you can put on your body to control your environment, um, all very exciting. And those could be among the devices that you, you turn around for. You know, certainly your wallet and your keys, right? So the dream is 
uh, great wearable products, things that we, people wear all the time for a long time, and a lot of people wear them. The two things that are going to drive um, this, this industry, I think, is the ability for us makers to make things that have a wear, an enduring wearable experience, as well as an engaging user experience that will draw people back to using these products. Again, compelling use cases, and that's how we'll end up with uh, better data, continuity of data, volume, di diversity of, of data. And so, uh, um, and th my last point, um, for those considering or thinking about the wearable space, making a product, getting one, I think the, 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 uh, the three things that um, are going to be driving the success of the space is going to be around design, you know, because it's such a personal thing, power, you know, it's uh, uh, battery technology and power technology has improved in a very non-Moore's Law-like uh, curve in the last several decades. It's basically it's very flat. And utility, uh, great use cases. Um, I know I'm standing between you and, uh, and a coffee break. And so um, I figured what uh, better to talk about wearables than to have one. So this is a little unorthodox, but I thought I'd, we'd have a little bit of fun before the coffee break. And, uh, and so, uh, who here has seen the nine dot puzzle where, a, a problem where you, the idea is how many l lines can you, what's the fewest number of lines you can use without lifting up your pencil um, to connect all nine dots, yeah? Okay. Um, so all of you are uh, disqualified from this puzzle, okay? <laughs> and I'm gonna challenge everyone here to think out of the box because ultimately whether it's wearables, uh, whether it's digital health uh, or other kinds of you know, biomaterials, um, the, the call is to think outside the box, right? So um, you saw a hint there. So anyone can, uh, can we do this in fewer than five, uh, five lines? Yeah, anyone? Give you a, give you a, tw a few seconds to try it, yeah? All right, so, okay, here we go. Oh, this, oh no, he's just drawing the air. <laughs> it's, it's pretty interesting, this puzzle. Like, if you've seen it, it's so obvious. And if you haven't, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty difficult. So, anyone else? Okay. Four? Yes, four. Exactly. And you can't you lift up your pencil, and it can't be curvy lines. And you have to use Ramanian geometry. Yeah. Yep. Yep. You got it. You got it. So going out, thinking out of the box. Have a great break, and thank you for your time. So I want to ask you, Sonny. Um, there's this company called Google that's been devising this quite high-priced kind of glasses type thing, and it's been spending a lot of money promoting it. Is that the future? You know, I think it is a future, but, if, uh, but will we sell hundreds, will we see hundreds of millions of Google Glass in the next year or two? Probably not, I, although for industry-specific applications, to give the Amazon fulfillment person x-ray vision and infinite memory, absolutely, because they don't care about fashion. But the rest of us do, so we'll see. Thank you.